Okay, now my sister and I are exactly four years apart. When she was four, I was eight. When she was five, I was nine. When she was ten, I was fourteen. What, I, what this information represents is what we call a function. It's a formula that connects two things together by a similar property. Let me show you what I mean. My age, which I'm going to represent with an M, is always equal to her age plus four years. See, when I was eight, that's four plus four. She was four, and four years after that, so I was eight. That's called a function. We can graph these types of functions on a linear graph. Let me show you what that looks like. When you draw two lines like this, where you have this axis and this axis, that's a fancy word for lines. You draw two axes, one is the x and one is the y. What we've drawn is called a coordinate graph. When we have functions like my age equals hers plus four, we can draw that by plotting what's called points on a coordinate graph. Take, for instance, the information. Now, over here, I've drawn what's called a t-chart. It helps you keep your information together so that when you graph it, it's easy to find what you're talking about. I've called her age X and my age Y. You'll notice when she was four, I was eight. When she was five, I was nine. It's the same information. I've just written it in what's called a t-chart. Now, each of these number systems represents a point point in time, really, when she was four, I was eight. We can plot that point in time on a graph. Let's say I want to do the x first, and so I want to go over four. One, two, three, four, and then do the y, which as you can see runs up and down. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I go over four and up to the eight and draw a little dot. That is where she and I were four and eight years old, respectively. We write that on the coordinate graph, or label the point, as four comma eight. You always write the x value first, and the y value second. That's called a coordinate. If you've ever played Battleship or some game like that, it's much the same thing. You know, A5, hit, miss. You know, 4, 8, hit, yay! It works like that. Let's take this. If I said, I'm just going to tell you that my age equals her age plus 3. Now, I realized a minute ago we were doing four, but since it's a different problem, I'm changing that last number to keep you thinking about it so you don't just know the answers in your head. You actually have to know what you're doing. You have my age equals her age plus three. Now, that's all I tell you, and I ask you to graph this information. And you freak out because you're like, ah, but it's okay. There's a method, and it'll be all right. You come over here to what I told you a minute ago about the T-chart, where you keep your information organized. And you pick some numbers. Right now, stick with ones above zero. Go with one, two, three, four, five. That's a big enough range that you can fill in and, and pretty much have a good idea of what your graph is going to look like and, and get the, the problem correct. Now, what I know is that my age equals her age plus three. What I also know is that for my coordinate graph, we're going to call her age x and my age y. The reason I'm doing this is that most times a function, or f of x, or something dealing with x, is equal to something. So the function is equal to whatever. So y is equal to something dealing with the x, and that's why I chose to label them this way. So you come over here and you say, okay, if her age is 1, 
then that makes my age 1 plus 3 or 4. And you write a little 4 over there under the y. You go down to the next one and do the same thing. My age, or y, equals x plus 3. So y equals 2 plus 3. That makes y equal to 5. Then go down to the next one and try it again. The function is equal to x plus 3. So if y, or f of x, is equal to x plus 3, then the third point is 3 plus 3, or 6. And you keep doing that until you have a set of points that you can now graph on your coordinate graph. Ah, but you have to be sure and label your axes. One, two, three, four, five. That's as high as I really need to go because that's all the points that I'm plotting. Do the same thing on the y-axis, only this time you need to go all the way to eight because that's the highest one that you have. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. For this problem, I'm only labeling the last point on the line because I know what each of the ones before it stand for. However, if it makes more sense to you or if it helps you keep track of things to label each line, please feel free to do that. That's fine and it'll help you keep track of things. Let's go ahead and plot some points. The first one, as I said in the last time, you have to do the x first. So you say, okay, well x is 1. So I go over 1 and up to 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 and put a little dot. The second point is 2, 5. I come over to 2 and I go up to 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and put a little dot. I'll do the same thing with 3. Come over 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and put a little dot. You'll keep doing that until you've plotted all of your points and then you draw a line that represents your equation. As you can see, the one point that we left out that connects it to make it a whole line is the zero. It's right here. Please, you all, bow to your corner, bow to your own. Three hands up and round you go, break it up with a doji dough. Chicken in the bread pan, kicking off dough, skip to my loo, my darling. The old lady out, you pretty little thing, promenade around the ring. Big foot up and little foot down, make that big foot jaw the ground. The lady step back and two gents in, back you going forward again. Step right up with an elbow swing, skip to my loo, my darling.